get a string here. Yes, it looks like my lens is dirty a little bit, but it's more or less lighting. Uh, this bearing, I can't seem to get it to move, and I don't have gas for my torch. So what I am going to do is I'm going to just slide that bearing in. There's plenty of room there on the shaft. So I'll slide that bearing in, and I've got a new bearing right here. A new bearing. She'll go right on there, just like she's supposed to. And I'll lock collar that sucker on there, and that'll be the end of that. But I really think that it should be put on this direction for the simple reason the locking collar will have to be pulled inward from the weight. I think they've actually put it on backwards, but... Anyway, it's got a little welding to do here, like right there and here. And for those of you that think I need a new combine, I don't think for 200 acres or more than 100 acres of soy that would justify the combine. This is a 94. It has, well, I don't know, 20, not even 2,000 hours on the motor. So why do I need a new one? Just ask them. But anyways, I'll just continue to fix the one I got. And, uh, you know, I'm good. I'm good with this combine. I like it. It works good. Just because it's almost 20 years old doesn't mean Yeah, we just got to put bolts in here. I'm going to weld these put this plate back together again where it's separated out. Uh, I had plenty of room to move the bearing inward, which, you know, kind of makes me happy. I did actually sandwich this a little bit uh, inward. I tapped it with the hammer here. Um, but all I have to do is tighten up that Allen screw, and we're good to go. Right, Tim? We good to go, Tim? You sure, Tim? Yeah. You unhappy, Tim? Wagon. What's wrong with the wagon? Uh, back committed to no. Well, okay, we can do that in a little bit. Yeah, so anyways. Hold on, I only need one. Hold that. like a so, line them up and then just put the bolts in. And we should be back in business. Okay, thanks for watching. 6013 rod, very thin. I don't even know what the size it is. Looks like it's a 16th of an inch, maybe a 32nd inch. Yeah, it looks like a 32nd rod. Uh, this is really thin metal. And it's kind of got some funky angles to it. It's dirty, 6013s work really good. Um, Timothy will watch as I... that I did my corn updates in. Uh, the top part of the field was probably some of the, the best corn I've done in a long time, other than the fact that the stalks are short. But that was from a lot of dry weather early on in July. Um, the lower part of this field is really, really disappointing because the ears were only about six inches up off the ground. And the uh, the uh, uh, the wind, Sandy, the uh, hurricane, knocked it over flat, and I mean flat. So when you got a six-inch ear that uh, ear that's six inches off the ground, uh, you can't get it 
So you can't just can't pick it up. So what I'm thinking of doing is an old fashioned sort of thing to do is to get some animals out here every year on this farm because the pH is up around 7 pH. That is chickweed. Uh, I hate chickweed. It's like my nemesis. Uh, that was another problem with the bottom part of the field down here is that, that chickweed uh, grows so fast in the, that this time of year. So I think what I'm going to do when I get this corn off of here in the next 10 minutes uh, is I'm going to hook the uh, disc up to the 7810. I'm going to disc this crap down. And I've got some rye in, uh, in the fertilizer spreader. I'm just going to spread it right on and roll it in. Uh, I think that the corn stalks will hold the ground enough that we won't have a problem with erosion and the uh, rye is going to sprout up pretty damn fast and we will get, uh, we'll get a pretty decent crop of rye off of it and, and the roots will bat it up or lock up the soil so it doesn't erode. And yes, I'm kind of talking like I've got some mental dysfunction because it's uh, I've got a lot of concentration to be doing. Yeah, uh, this corn is really yielding pretty good up the top end, which, uh, you know, is making me pretty happy. But you can see that even this up here is, uh, you know, it's knocked over. So my snoots are on the ground. The ears aren't really that tall off the ground, but there's a lot of ears. Really nice. Pretty nice corn. Doesn't look nice, but it is nice. So, anyways. Thanks for watching, and that is my corn update for the harvest of the field I did my corn updates on. So, thanks for watching. Well, there's proof that if you put a new bearing in, she'll work just fine. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what the hell's taking these guys so long to get me a wagon, but I think they're in slow motion. But anyways, it's working. Thanks for watching. And again, my auger is working wonderfully since I put the new bearing up in there. So anybody saying that I need a new combine because there was a bearing out at the end of my discharge auger, come on, man, get real. Uh, you know, farming isn't that profitable uh, in New Jersey to spend three, four hundred thousand dollars on a combine. Yeah, it's a TR-96. Um, those are the hours right there, 2,900 and some hours. Uh, 2,965. No, and I don't know if they're separator hours or engine hours. I think they're engine hours. Uh, anyway, that, that doesn't warrant a new combine. I've seen these combines with 8,000 hours on them and, you know, still running strong. Uh, change the oil, grease them, and you're good to go. A bearing here and there is not that big of an expense. So anyways, yeah, that bearing is working properly. Thank you very much. Uh, the corn is beautiful, though. It's just coming out of here about 17, 18% moisture. Um, you know, I'm still going to run it through the dryer, of course, because, you know, I need 15.5%. Uh, this field here is 8 acres. And because of the uh, about four or five acres, well, I'm going to say four or five acres of it, um, I will have gotten about not quite a hundred bushels to the acre because of the uh, the wind damage from Sandy. Uh, but it's not enough damage that I warrant uh, a uh, an insurance policy. But this wagon holds 385 bushels, and it's going to be more than full when I'm done dumping it in here. And the dryer's full at 450 bushels. So no, a little over 800. I got a bit, a little better than 800 bushels to the acre off of this plant, off of this field. So, and this is the worst field on the farm, and this is the home farm. So, well, as you all know, I absolutely hate the white-tailed deer. When I was a kid, I'd do anything to hunt white-tailed deer, just because I love them. I love to go hunt the damn things. Well. Being this corn was short down in the center and Hurricane Sandy had blown it over, I've got a lot of ears that are down there that are like this, you know, just kind of laying there. And I don't want them dirty, rotten, bastard, white-tailed deer to eat it. So, I've got Timothy down there. I just hooked him up to the 80, with the 8120 and the 22-foot John Deere disc. And he is going to disc this to a nice, fine powder. <laughs> so I don't see any of these kernels of corn. At least not too many anyway, because I want the deer to starve to death. 
I really do. I'd like to see every one of them dead. Uh, they're useless. They, they serve no purpose on this planet uh, anymore because they're just useless. So, anyway, he's coming with this thing and my glove is in there and I'm going to need to get it out. And it's just an awesome tractor. That thing will pull that thing like three gears faster, but I need my glove. My glove. My glove. So he'll give me my glove. He doesn't run me over. I need my glove, Tim. I know. In the military, where do uh, 18 year old kids get to play with such fun toys? <laughs> anyway, yeah, 635 John Deere disc. I got it a few years ago. Now it's been a few years ago already, maybe three years ago. Um, I should have chisel plowed it, but I don't want to. I kind of want to leave as much trash on the top as I can. Um, he'll get over this maybe two or three times, and I'm going to run a roller harrow with no teeth, and then we're going to put rye in. So this field will be growing with rye. Anyways, back to the white-tailed deer. Um, they probably did 50% of the damage that was done to this field. Uh, out of eight acres, I got a little over 800 bushels, so uh, it's a little better than 100 bushels to the acre. Probably without the drought in July, the deer damage, and the uh, hurricane, I probably would have gotten somewhere around 1,600 bushels. Because I tell you what, the top of this field was second to none. It was good corn. Anyways, thanks for watching.